Hey there guys, Gary here for GemVFX. Welcome back to another tutorial. It's, I'm hoping this is gonna hope I'm gonna get away with making this a short one, but I do know that I tend to waffle, so I will try and keep it to an absolute minimum. On that note, we're going to talk today about the Cryptomat node. So it is a tutorial, but it is also a one by one. So the reason why we're talking about the Cryptomat node is it's something in Blender which can save you so many hours of time. Because basically what it does is it creates a, an image which essentially has individual masks for individual objects in your scene. So if you've got, as you can see in front of us right now, so it looks kind of like it's like some sort of weird alien thing that's been caught out in a, in a room. Um, so the point is that, for example, if I decided, or my client, if we'd look at it that way, decided that they didn't like the color of my little bloke, you'd be absolutely stuffed if it wasn't for cryptomats because a cryptomat node doesn't just create uh, masks for the objects, each individual object in your scene. Yes, that's right, every single object. You can also set it to use the individual shaders as well. So if you've got a bunch of materials on one character, for example, on our bloke, we've got, in fact, let's just have a little bit of a closer look. So here's our closer, little closer, let's just zoom in a bit so you can see. So he's got some emissive uh, little things coming out of his hips and one just on his belly because it's the same material. He's got a little patch of purple on his chest and I've intentionally made the colors clash just to make life a bit more obvious. And and, and he's got kind of, he hasn't got hands, he's got guns because I thought, why not? And he's got very big feet because I quite like big feet on characters and it's not very good. But the point is, it's not about the quality, it's about the quantity. And the quantity on this is all about the Cryptomat node. So. If you have a client who turns around and goes, do you know what? Yes, uh, like it's not bad. Uh, the copper on the pipes isn't too terrible. Um, the green, the green on the chest. I do not like the green on the body. I would like to change that to another color. It's not a, a mask you can easily generate unless you actually have the Cryptomat node, which does it for you automatically. So let's go into this and have a quick look at how we go about doing this. The first thing you have to do is make sure that you have turned on in your render your outputs. So let's look down here at the outputs and you'll notice that I haven't done anything with the light diffuse, any of those. I don't care about those. And also I am rendering this with EV, note EV, and all of these are available in EV. The fact that I can actually render out very quick render pass and then get you know the diffuse light and color, the specular light and color, a volume light, the emission, the environment, the shadow, and the ambient occlusion, as well as the cryptomat, I might add, which is currently turned on, it would normally be turned off. I think all of that in Eevee is quite fantastic. So what we've got here, well, let's just forget all of these, as I said at the top, I've just talked about them. And let's go back down here to Cryptomat. Now, what this does is it creates output for each object or output for each material. And we're not gonna use asset because we've got no actual assets in there. We're just using general stuff that we've built and put in the scene. So I am going to click object and material and I'm going to go over here to not my compositing node and you can see here I'm just going to render this frame again let me just hit F12 there we go so you can see there is my image in the uh, compositing setup um, so I'm going to click across to mine that says comp and in here you can see I've got an image viewer and here I have got my render list because I've clicked on it. Basically what I've got here is a compositor. And the reason for this is that even though you can have the viewing node behind here, and I've discussed that before when I was talking about comping Little Island, um, you can have a look at that. It's uh, in my uh, channel. Please subscribe, by the way, if you haven't already. Um, this is currently uh, 22nd week uh, on my 22nd video. I'm going to keep on going until I get 100 people. I'm, I'm one day maybe, oh, I don't know. Mind you saying that, 36 of you right now, fantastic, thank you very much. Um, although I was discussing with someone today, I think one of those might be me from another YouTube account that I've got, another Google account. Maybe I'm following myself, I don't know. Let's say, let's say I've got 35, just on the safe side, I mean. So here we've got, because I've got used nodes, that has got my render layers and it's got my composite, which is my file image as it comes out of here. But you'll notice here, if I just zoom in on this, in fact, let me just, making that too far apart, let's just bring these in for now. We have an image, alpha and depth, because alpha and depth are pretty much standard, they're always used on. We've got cryptomat object zero, 
Crypt to match object one, because our levels are set to three. It could easily equally be two, to be honest with you, to get just one of each. But let's leave it on that. So cryptomat material zero zero and cryptomat material zero one. Now we can't see those unless we plug them directly into here. And then you can see there's the object and there's the material. But you'll notice it's not very specific, and that's because we're not actually using the crypto map. We're just plugging that into the image, which is not the way you use this. Let's leave the image back in there. I'm going to bring that over here a bit. And I'm going to add in here from the mat, of course, a crypto mat node. I'm going to drop that in here. And let's just quickly talk about what we've got here, just to go through the inputs and stuff. Right, so the inputs we have in here are image, which you basically is your standard image input point. And then you've got a crypto zero, crypto zero one, and crypto zero two. Now, what that means is you can plug up to three different things at the same time into this. Uh, mostly, we don't necessarily have to do that because we're not combining. Well, let's put it this way. If you need to get um, stuff from the material and then change also stuff from an object, you can do that both at the same time. But then I think that just that level of doing that will be a little bit confusing. So for me, I tend to work on these individually. So I'll have one crypto mat and then I'll have another crypto mat and so on. Unless I'm doing a global change to everything that I'll have or a lot of stuff and I'll have it coming out of here. What we need to do is be able to see here if you look. So that's your inputs but on your outputs. If you have a look here, what we have is image. And so that gives you a colored output the image with the mat applied to only the included selected layers. You have the mat which basically gives you a black and white alpha of all the selected crypto layers. And pick. And that gives you a colored image of the crypto map pass, which you can use with a viewer node to select which passes you want to use to create your mat. Right. I hope that makes sense. I'll show you what I mean. So basically, uh, if I were to see anything, anything that this is where my final result comes from. But if I were to see anything going on in here, all I'm going to do is I can change this to a viewer node. And you can see that's just showing what's from the last time I used a viewer node, which is when I was setting this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in here another output. I'm going to add a viewer. Now you can see it's picked up that viewer node. And I'm going to take my image and put my image in there. And I'm going to put my image in there. And it's picked up that there's something, but there's nothing going out of this into here. Now this is where people get confused, I think, normally. I know I have before now. I want to pick an object from my scene. I'll pick crypto object zero zero, stick it in crypto zero, and then I well, you'd assume that anything that's on here, I would be able to see up here. But you can't because what you would need is a viewer to pick this from here, anything from here, to be able to put it here. Let me explain visually. I'm gonna to go to the output, I'm gonna create another viewer. I'm gonna put that here, I'm gonna drag this onto pick. I'm gonna click that one. And now, if I disconnect this, you get nothing. But if I connect this back into here, because we're connected on the viewer that's going to pick, which you can see up here, now you can see every single object in this scene. Now, it looks like the floor and all of that are the same object. They're not. Even though they have a very similar color, they are still considered to be objects. So that pass for that floor and that object there and this character are all different. So I'll give you an idea. Now here you've got in here, in the matte objects, you've got add and remove. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this pale blue pipe here. And you'll see, very subtle, but that's gone completely solid. Everything else in here is pretty much transparent. But now, if I click on this viewer, you can see just that pipe. If I go back to this one, I want to put that little chappy in. I go add, click on little chappy, you can't tell, but I go back to the viewer. There he is, there the pipe is. So you can see how this works. Yep. So you could adjust something and then you could layer it over the top of your image here and then put that in there. So that's the way you could do that. Let's just do it this way. Let me just disconnect that. I'm going to just connect the material now into Crypto 1. And I'm going to the picker. And now you can see all of this stuff has the same material pretty much. The floor doesn't, but all this of the same material. But if I zoom in, show you in here, there are multiple materials on a little fella. There's a bit on his chest bit there, a little bit in his belly which is the same as the ones that are actually here. There's nothing picked at all, so there's nothing to be seen. So if I add that panel there, and then I add the mouth, and I'm gonna pick that little green bit there, this bit here and that bit there have the same shader on, as does that little bit there, 
So when I click on this, that comes up, that comes up, that comes up. They're all the same material. You can just about see the highlight edge of that little hole. So that's just come up. And there are all the light patches as well. So that's fantastic. That's how you actually access them. That's how we view them by going into the pick viewer and then seeing them here. That's fine. That's just a viewer. But how do we use it on our scene? And that's the practical part. So what we're going to do is I want to actually change the color of my panel here. Now there's a couple of ways of doing it, but the best way is to add a color correction here that uses the matte from this object. So let's just go out to the picker and I'm just going to remove uh, that and I'm going to remove uh, that and I'm going to remove that green. So if I go back to here now, I should you. Right, it's just those panels. If I just create, I'm going to add a new viewer pop this one here. I'm going to just stick that into there so I can see my image. So if I go back, yeah, let's click on here, not the view node. So I'm going to add from color. I'm going to add a hue saturation value. I'm going to drop it into here. So if I now shift this up, you see, or down the hue, the saturation, it basically wipes out all uh, color. Hue, of course, I can cycle through all sorts of things there. And of course, value, we can make things lighter and darker with that. But that's globally. So what I'll do is I've now picked what I wanted to from here. So I'm going to take the mat. I'm going to just drop the mat into the factor on that. So now, while this is in here, we can decide to change the color here because it's only going to pick it from the mat. And these viewers, they're really quite useful. We just need to, let's just minimize them a little bit so they're out of the way. So let's go back into this viewer. And then let's, we're going to put a finger on shift. I'm going to just change the color. Uh, let's just move it across. Oh, you see, that's like a nice yellow and green. That's nice. Let's increase the saturation. And uh, can I increase the value a bit? Let's do that a bit brighter. There we go. So I can desaturate all this. Leave that up. And then pop that there. So that's nice. Oh, dear, what happened there? I like that green. That's nice. I quite like that. That's much better green. So, and then I also, I want to change something else. So I'm going to change his color from the green. So, in fact, no, I don't do, I will do that. I'm going to do that first. So I'm going to add from matte, I'm going to add another crypto matte. And I'm going to take the material zero into there. So the image that is looking for the crypto matte from there. And I'm going to stick this picker, let's get rid of that. And I'm going to pop it onto this one. So I can see it. Let's disconnect that viewer. I'm going to pop that onto image so I can see that one. Let's pick that. And I want to pick this suit. So I'm going to pick the suit. And that does go a little bit more solid. So now I can see just the suit, nothing else. And the blues, nothing else. Just the green that's in the suit. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is over here, I'm going to add another hue saturation. I'm going to take the matte from that one. I'm going to stick it in the factor there. And I'm going to change his suit. I'm going to change it to red, if I can, which should be somewhere around here. There we go. And I'm going to decrease the saturation and ramp up the value. So I can make that a lot higher. The main reason for doing this, actually, is because someone asked me about the Spider-Man suit from the Spider-Man game, the one, the negative suit. And the question was, how would I basically turn something inside out colour-wise? So if I just very quickly do this and show you why I came into Encryptomat for this. I'm just going to delete those. And I'm going to go back to the object and drop the object in there. Let's just disconnect that one. So that can go into our image and this one can go into our pick. There we go. And then in here, let's just remove him. And let's remove the bar. So if I click on that now, everything's empty. Go back into the viewer and let's add him back in. I can see him, there are all of him. And they wanted a negative version of him. Well, the idea of that is now I've got the mat from there. I will go add, what is it, a color. I'll go invert. And then, so basically if I click on this, it's inverted absolutely everything. And you can see the strength of that invert is quite intense. But if I click the mat and still there, it's only inverted him. There you go. So essentially, 
that is how I would do it. I would take the, uh, the whole color path of him and negate it. But of course, obviously, you can see there's color going on in there as well. So what I would do is I would go into uh, color and click hue, hue saturation value. I'll drop it just in front of this little, little chippy chippy. And I want the matte from this also to go into the uh, factor of this. Let's, if you can see now, the de that's it, sorry, the desaturation, sorry. So what that has done is anywhere which is bright is now dark, and anywhere that's dark is now bright. Basically, doing the whole shebang. In fact, if I put the alpha on it, it actually brings in a tiny bit more gray, which actually looks a little bit better, not too much black. Um, but that was how, that would be how I would negate it. But it gave me a perfect opportunity to talk about the crypto mat. Um, I hope that's uh, some use. Remember, this is just a, a part of the way to the solution. Don't forget that's not going into the composite. Always make sure that the last thing you do goes back into the uh, composite. Um, and of course, this is, has, this is the best thing about this, of course, is because it happens as you move it. So let's go back to this view and uh, let's go back to this and then let's go to the uh, ja, 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 ja. object mode, please. Go to the view locked camera. So I'm going to turn it around. Let's pop it. Uh, so we're looking down on him a little bit. How about that? So, I mean, you know, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Anything you do, you see all the crypto is still there. So let's press F12 again and watch as it renders and then pop, it goes across to what we've done to it. That looks very slender manish, doesn't it? I don't think I quite like that. That's scaring me a bit. Oh, I don't like it. Thank you, Dad. Um, right, okay, so there you go. That's cryptomats in a nutshell and how to actually use them. Uh, it's um, Once you get the hang of it, it's actually really easy. And the best thing about it is, you know, you can go in there and change something on a whim without any trouble whatsoever, which will make your client very happy. Oh, I don't like that color. I need to change it. Oh, God, it's good to be ages. I've done it. I'll tell him in a bit. <whistles> Time for a tea. No, <laughs> Sorry, I'm just here, just twingling my chair. You can't really hear that. Listen, um, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, as I say, we do release, we, that's the royal we, I do release one of these each week. Um, next week, I haven't quite decided what it's going to be yet. If anyone's out there has got on any ideas, let me know. More than happy to take on any anything. Um, within, because the thing is, if I'm not entirely sure, I go and find out how to do it. And then I know as well, which is great. So as I say, it's a learning process. Everybody's always learning. Um, I, I include myself in that in a big way. Right, guys, look after yourselves. Take care. And I will see you next week. <laughs>